All right, so maybe you've heard of the NASDAQ 100 ETF, ticker symbol QQQ. And this is actually something I invest a lot of my own personal money into. I'm buying into the fund almost every week. Uh, but it does get some criticism, and that is because it is so heavily concentrated in one area. And if you actually look at the numbers, 48% of the portfolio is concentrated to just 10 companies. So is there a better way to invest in the NASDAQ than QQQ? Well, I wanna talk about an ETF that's called the QQEW, and this is the equal weighted version of the NASDAQ 100. We'll go through the historical performance, we'll talk about the allocation and what it looks like, and we'll compare the two together. All right, so welcome back. The ETF that we'll explore today, the full name is called the First Trust NASDAQ 100 Equal Weight Index ETF. And I really wanna focus in on that term equal weighting. If you don't know what this means, this is referring to the market capitalization. So market capitalization or market cap, that's really what the value is of a, of a particular company. And if we take something like Apple, for example, they have a market cap of 2.3 or $2.4 trillion. And what happens in other index funds is a lot of times they are cap weighted, meaning the bigger the market cap of a company in the fund, the larger piece of a pie that it represents. Apple, for example, being one of the largest companies in the world, if it's in a cap weighted index fund, it's going to take one of the largest pieces of that pie. Where the opposite is true here with something that's equal weighted, this means, hey, we don't care about the size of the company. We're really looking at the number of companies in a fund, and we are going to distribute that across all of them equally. So there's equal slices of a pie that the fund represents based on the number of companies within it. Does that make sense so far? I'm thinking of pies or pizza. Yes, that's how it works. Okay, so first if we look at the QQQ, which is just the NASDAQ 100 ETF, this is market cap weighted, not equal weighted. We are going to see that the top 10 companies look like this. Names you've seen, Apple in, in Alphabet or Google. Tesla is on the list. And these make up about 48% of the fund. And you can think about it this way. For every $100 you put into QQQ, $48 would go towards those 10 companies. All right, but with something like QQEW, this is the equal weight ETF of the NASDAQ 100, you can see that nearly all the 100 companies are represented equally around 1% distribution. So for every $100 you invest in QQEW, each one is roughly distributed across each company in the fund. All right, so why does that actually matter? Well, it really comes down to risk, I believe, and how heavily concentrated you are in any one company or any one sector. And by equally distributing it, that can give you a more broad diversification of the things that you hold within an ETF like this. And so you've heard that term, diversification. It's so important. You know, it's hard to pick single stocks and really time the market. So buying a ton of companies across a ton of sectors, you'll probably do okay. And if you think about that, once you get towards the ETF space, you can find yourself in a place where you are heavily concentrated uh, into a single sector or into a, a few companies where if those have big giant swings, which we've seen recently, then you may feel those swings in the performance and into ultimately the performance of your portfolio. So let's actually compare that industry mix between the market cap weighted QQQ and the equal weighted QQEW. When we look at the equal weighted ETF, we can see that technology, healthcare, consumer cyclicals, those are the top three industries or sectors represented. And that's roughly 38%, 14% and 14% respectively. But now if we take a look at QQQ, the top industry is also technology, as we would know, but that's a whopping 46%. So it's much, much higher. Basically, a, a big chunk uh, of, of the pie is going to tech. And that can absolutely make a difference depending on the performance of those companies and those sectors over time. All right, what else matters here? So when you compare these two funds, you have to take a look at both the expense ratio. So that's how much it costs to essentially hold the fund. Those are fees the fund charges you. And then I like to think about assets, like how big is this ETF? Is it something small not a lot of investors have put their own money in? Or is it something massive with billions and billions of dollars 
under management. And so if we take a look at those across these, the QQQ has an expense ratio of 0.2% about $151 billion of assets. And uh, that's pretty strong. That means that the larger the fund, essentially, uh, the more liquidity that you would have. Meaning, if you're trying to sell a bunch of shares, do you have enough buyers that are actually going to purchase them? Is, is there enough people participating in the ETF for that reason? If we look at the QQEW, it is much smaller and it's more expensive. It's a 0.57% expense ratio and a $1.1 billion of net assets. And to put this into perspective, the QQEW is almost 20 times more expensive than something like VTI, which is Vanguard's total stock market index. So that's where you own the whole stock market, the whole US stock market. And that expense ratio is 0.03% compared to 0.57%. This does add up over time. You know, if you have a huge position over a long period of your life, the fees will be substantial if you actually run the math. It's kind of sad. <laughs> uh, anything below 1% is, uh, I think, fairly acceptable, but it does make a difference and you can do the math on your own. Okay, but when you compare these two, I think the one thing to really actually take a look at is how are they performing? Is there an advantage to do the equal weight versus the market cap weighted versions of the NASDAQ 100? Let's take a look at that. We're gonna dive into a ton of charts here and actually show some different ways to measure this over time. All right, first we'll start with the QQQ year to date. So you can see this is down about 33%. So nearly a third of its value has been wiped out over these last 11 months. Uh, I've pretty much been buying the whole way down. So, uh, and, and I'll buy the whole way up. I mean, that, that's kind of my strategy, but you can see uh, that's a pretty significant drop. Now, if we compare that with the equal weighted version of this, it's down just 22%. So 11 percentage points less, less volatility, less downside because of that equal distribution. Now the S&P 500 is a down about 18% year date, and that's uh, for a reference. So a little more uh, downside than the market, if we could could refer to the S&P 500 as the baseline market, uh, but not as much as the QQQ. And I believe that's probably attributed to the big sell-off we've seen in, in technology. I, I think Meta or Facebook is down like 70%. That's really wild. And uh, that's, that's obvious here from QQQ. It's just b dragging that whole uh, fund down because that sector has been sold off uh, so much, which is understandable because it's risen so much. It's made people super wealthy over the last decade. But there's a time uh, for a rise and fall for everything. I think we're seeing that play out right now. All right, so let's take a look at the five-year chart for both of these ETFs. Looking at the QQQ, we see that over the last five years, it's returned 84.5%, which I think is pretty good. When we look at the equal weighted version, QQEW, we see that comes in just around 64%. So about 20 points lower on the return. And uh, you can see that over, over the last five years. What I think is actually really interesting is if we go ahead and compare these two, you can definitely see the gap there. And I think that comes back to that volatility piece. More upside, more risk, more reward, or a little more conservative and maybe you give up a little bit of the gains you could have locked in. But what I really wanna show you is taking a look, going backwards from the peak of the market in January, 2021, and looking at how these were performing up until that point. The QQEW returned 167%, which is just incredible. So that's the equal weighted version, 167% leading up to the, the peak there. But the QQQ, as you can see, returned a massive, 245% over those five years leading up to the top, which is just incredible. Can you imagine if you did, probably couldn't, but if you did time the market and locked in those gains, what a, what a rocket ship uh, and a place to put your money. I, I would even imagine that's one of the best in performing index type investments you could have made in that five-year period. I don't actually know. I kind of want to look into it, but I mean, what, well, that's what I would expect because if you think about technology, and some of these companies, that's when they were really thriving and hitting uh, their stride all through through the COVID uh, reopening trade and, and everything that was happening. Uh, so they were big beneficiaries of that environment up until uh, January when things started to head south. Now, one other thing to factor in, however, is if you take a company like 
Tesla, they actually returned 2300% in that same time period. 2300%. And, and if you think about this, for every 10 grand you invested back then, that would have turned into at the peak 20 three times that amount, $230,000. So you put in uh, 100K and you crank out $2.3 million. Now, I think the representation of uh, Tesla in QQQ is about three or 4%. The representation of Tesla in QQEW, the equal weight would be about 1%. And so you're getting some of that upside, but definitely not 2300 percent of the upside but that's also the risk reward the reason to not necessarily focus on single stocks just try to capture the gains that you can all right so the question we need to answer then is which one is better the equal weighted nasdaq 100 etf or the market cap weighted nasdaq 100 etf and i think it comes back to just your risk tolerance you know over time it appears that the market cap weighted was the better investment that that risk gave you more upside and you had more potential for growth and gains but as we know with investing past performance does not equal future success you have to be thoughtful and careful of that and so do we think qqq has another 250 percent upside in the next five years i don't know in fact the experts would say no it doesn't if you turn on CNBC, they, they will tell you, hey, no, big tech is over. FANG, if you know this acronym, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, those were the leaders, the bellwethers of the market. And they believe the best years are behind them. The stock prices today might suggest that's true, uh, but we don't know. And so I think it's important to, to, to factor that in mind. I personally believe that technology, if you bet against it, it's silly. I, I just don't, I don't believe it. I think that some of these companies in the NASDAQ 100, in the market cap weighted uh, version of that ETF, they have great days ahead of them. They've put so much money into AI and to building a moat around their business that I think the innovation and the long-term success is inevitable. That includes Meta and Facebook, by the way. However, if we go to the QQEW, the equal weight, I think something that I've thought about with this is one, it is very expensive, as I said. That that 0.57% uh, expense ratio does add up. And if you have a big account, it will suck to think about the money that you may have missed out on. I also think there's something that personally bothers me about weighting Peloton, an absolute dumpster fire of a stock with a company like Apple. And so when you have that equal weighting, you are just kind of throwing it out there and saying, hey, we don't want to we don't want to favor any one company we're just going to spread it out and go and and i don't know if that's the best either because it doesn't put a weight towards the companies that are clearly bigger dominating have a lot more uh safety and and upside and real businesses essentially okay but i'd love to know what you think which one would you choose the equal weight or the market cap weighted let me know in the comments I'll be back soon with another ETF overview video like this. If it was helpful, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and join me for videos like this every week. I will see you then.